if your town was swarmed by alien slugs that slither down everyone's throats, turning them into bug-controlled zombies, what would you do? In this How To Be video, we'll follow the small town sheriff, see if we can keep the worms out of our mouths, and ultimately attempt to beat the meat monstrosity in Slither. If you think you'd be one of the few survivors with your gray matter intact, tell me why in the comments. Statistically, most of you would have ended up in the back seat with a worm controlling your body. It's okay though, I'm more than happy to dole out mercy killings. Just just don't expect a proper burial. We start out following two small town cops shooting the shit when a large meteor impacts behind them. When they, or the cameraman, or whoever it is, rushes over to investigate it, its shell opens, revealing red slithering giblets. The Blob was an infamous movie by then, and should have served as a prescient cautionary tale to those whose curiosity of the extraterrestrial tends to overcome their pragmatic fear of the unknown. The following morning, Starla's giving some thirsty ass teenagers a lesson on Darwin's theory of evolution. Starla's the uninterested gold digger who shacked up with Grant Grant, the town's rich man on the hill. He gets fed up with her never being in the mood and heads out for a walk to the bar to pick up other women. Brenda Montgomery, who had a crush on him back in the day, sees him all by his lonesome and makes a pass to shoot her shot. Grant could easily have checked them into a nice hotel room with a stocked minibar, but Brenda wants to relive her youth by shagging in a swampy forest next to a tree carved out with her initials. Fun. Grant gets second thoughts about cheating on Star when he shakes off his beer goggles, he notices a gooey meteor egg out of the corner of his eye. This would be the cue to take your side piece to a hotel or crawl back into your dead bedroom. Despite Brenda's concerns, Grant presses onwards with his drunken investigation of unidentifiable biomass. The trail of slime leads them to an oversized, translucent slug worming around. Grant, deranged from his blue balls and careless from his drinking, starts poking it with a stick. I think it goes without saying that prodding sentient alien goo is a great way to end your bloodline. <laughs> if I was Brenda, I'd be gone like the wind. I was never there, I don't know anyone named Grant, I left the bar and went straight home. Per usual, nobody will believe anything you say about a giant slug shooting a parasite into Grant's stomach. Obviously, he's infected with something horribly insidious, and a lot of people in this town will die in gruesome ways as it infects more people. Since there's nothing you can really do about it, you might as well book a week-long trip to Hawaii while this thing runs its course. Once Grant turns into a zombie, or worse, the town is devastated, a band of survivors or the national guard figures out a way to kill it, then you can come back with your lay flower necklace acting all surprised. After the parasite slithers into his medulla oblongata, Grant, or more accurately, the thing that took over him, wakes up and heads home to engorge on all the meat in their fridge. This alien's hungry. The next morning, Grant Thing sets up his lair in the shed and heads inside to find Starla trying to make up for rejecting him last night. To Starla, Grant only seems mildly off. There's no red flags, and the bug bite on Grant's chest isn't anything to be seriously alarmed about. Her luck is that this parasite isn't transmitted through bodily fluids. Starla heads into work, glowing from the amazing morning she had with Grant. Who knew alien parasites were so charming and passionate? It must have evolved to possess these skills as a way to disarm and isolate new hosts it can breed with. Unless Starla can pick up on his new idiosyncrasies, like all the meat he's buying, what the lock on the basement door is for, and why their dog suddenly went missing, she's gonna end up as an alien egg factory. She hops in the shower to get ready for the deer cheer event later that evening. Grant's tentacles get excited at the thought of joining her, but he stuffs it back in his shirt and runs off telling her that he'll meet her there. Close call. Not sure why Grant thing aborted. If he attacked Starla in the shower, she'd have nowhere to run. Maybe his tentacle wasn't fully formed and ready for pumping yet. Maybe Grant and the parasite are cohabitating and Grant was able to persuade his alien counterpart to spare Starla. What an incredibly horrifying situation to be in. A dark passenger fighting a parasite inside you for control over your own body. Your mind desperately trying to overpower the nerve impulses the parasite is sending your body in an attempt to command it to assault your loved ones. The alien urges to reproduce are too strong. If Starlo won't be the one they consummate with, the lonely bar wench will have to do. Oh god, Grant. <laughs> Brenda couldn't have known that that was gonna happen. 
Grant was too strong to escape from once he pinned her down. Starla comes back home that night to find Grant swollen up and misshapen, which he unconvincingly explains away as a bee sting. He says he already saw the doctor about it and got a prescription, a lie that Starla will easily uncover. With his condition dramatically worsening by the hour, he won't be able to keep his secret from her for much longer. Starla is able to survive the night since Grant thing already found a host for his babies. Another strike of luck. She heads into work early the next day and makes a call to the doctor about Grant's condition. The doc says he hasn't seen her husband in over a year. Her husband is acting weird, had a gross bug bite on his chest, and now he's lying about why his head looks like Glenn after Negan took a couple swings with Lucille. I think I'd call him out and stay at my friend's place until he gets checked out by a doctor. No way am I going home to that. Starla's more sympathetic to his condition than I am, until the cops show up and tell her that he was last seen entering Brenda's home the night she went missing. That and their dog went missing around the same time. Now I definitely wouldn't be sitting on the couch waiting for him to come home. Starla gets curious about their locked up basement and cracks it open with a baseball bat to take a peek. Yep, time to leave. It's tempting to dial 911 from their home like Starla does, but considering he could be back at any moment, she needs to prioritize getting to a safer location first. Now it's too late. Grant things on to her. I'm too ugly for you now, is that it? Starla bashes his swollen head with the nightstand and fends off his umbilical cords long enough for the cops to show up. Bill and the other cops are too stunned by Grant's mutilated face and tendril arm to open fire on him, and he escapes out the back door to God knows where. I can understand how they'd hesitate to pull the trigger on what days ago used to be an upstanding townsman that they knew. Three days later, the police are still searching for the Grant squid thing. Everybody in the town knows that Grant went nuts and has a severe deformity, but I don't think they know how dangerous he really is. The cops get their third call about Grant stealing farm animals and drive over to check it out. Grant's been busy slaying dogs and feasting on their innards. What's most concerning though is how he's able to drag a 1,200 pound cow off into the forest without any machinery. If his giant bendy arm back in Starla's attack was any indication, he's been cultivating a substantial amount of mass from eating all the farm animals he's been hauling off for days. Brenda may have been food too, except that Grant's been solely on a ribeye and dog meat diet so far. Brenda's probably infected and turning into something grotesque like Grant. Using the locations of the attacks, the cops triangulate his position to somewhere in the forest between the town's ranches. Grant's not being inconspicuous or unpredictable. All three ranches were hit in a directional pattern. The next one he hits should be the Myers Ranch. They gather up a posse and raid the evidence locker for some extra firepower. Damn, how'd they get a G36K? I'll be taking that one. They neglect to take the hand grenade they confiscated from some crazy fucks who wanted to use it to fish for trout. I would also be taking that with me, because the Grant thing has to be utterly yoked from lifting and eating cows, and because grenades are cool. Bill is going to want to make sure he's at the back of the formation with how untrained the rest of them are. Aren't there qualified hunters they could bring with them instead of this ragtag group of undisciplined rednecks? Starla heard about the raid and somehow convinces Bill that in order to find Brenda, they need to capture Grant alive, and the only way to capture Grant is if she is there to bait him. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that Brenda's dead or wishing she was. Starla just needs to stay home while they lynch her husband. If she comes, her emotional reactions could jeopardize the ambush. Bill and his posse lie in wait at the Strutmeyer's farm until nightfall. As expected, Grant slithers out of the tree line to butcher another cow. This would be the perfect time for a hunter to blow his brains out the back of his skull with a 338 wind mag quick and easy. Everyone's still too stunned by Grant's appearance to take the shot. Starla runs after him to stop him from getting away. She pleads for him to come get checked out at a hospital. Like anyone, including Grant, thinks that's an option. Seeing how he decapitated a cow with his tentacle whip, attempting to capture Grant is also out of the question. This is the perfect opportunity to kill him. Grant, marriage is a sacred bond. Just come with us. <laughs> Here's what Bill needs to do. Sweetheart, we're married. Consider that a divorce. One of the boys runs up on Grant with his chrome deagle, demanding that he shows him where Brenda is instead of immediately firing like he should. A bad move. This thing is super strong, has tentacles that could whip at you and might be able to take some hits. Not that he'll be hitting anything one-handing his .50. Grant is not going to be sitting down over a pot of tea with his lawyer discussing the conditions of his surrender. Whoever is your best shot needs to put one between Grant's eyes while his head is popped up like a prairie dog. They might only get one shot. It 
it's too quick to land a shot on now. The cops chase it into the swamps where they find a barn that smells like Satan's asshole. Bill hears a woman crying inside, probably Brenda. Bill loses the rock, paper, scissors game and has to take point. The good news, they found Brenda. The bad news, she looks like Captain Keys after the flood got to him. There is no way I'd be getting anywhere remotely close to her. Judging by the convulsion she's having, I'd guess that she's a carrier form pregnant with Grant's squid babies. Bill and his crew needs to step the f back before she bursts open. And why is nobody guarding their six? Did everyone forget that Grant is still out there and that he might be angry when he sees you all waving guns around in his baby mama's face? He then, no joke, tells Brenda that they need to take her to a hospital. I don't even know what to say to that, other than fuck no. I think if I was in that group, I'd toss a cigarette lighter into the hay next to her and lock the barn door. <laughs> Bill dives onto Starla and covers their mouths to avoid involuntarily ingesting the giant larva. Laying down like that was a risky play when you don't know if the larva can weasel their way through your skin or if they'll give up and slither away like they did. Mayor Jack and one other cop made it out alive too, but the rest of their posse is infested. Seeing what happened to Brenda and Grant post-infection, they're beyond saving. Unless he wants to deal with a whole lot more Grant things or larva producing carriers like Brenda, he's gonna need to take them around back and put him down. Bill and Starla need to start driving around town, warning everyone that dangerous parasites like the ones that infected Grant are everywhere. To arm up, stay alert and not let them in or around your mouth. Everyone already knows that Grant became disfigured and insane after getting infected, but I think everyone would take this warning seriously. While they are warning everyone, the mayor needs to call for some backup from nearby towns. That last engagement then their numbers out substantially. If they're gonna have a shot at beating this thing, they need a lot more trained officers and firepower. Bill's too slow. The larvae are already in town, slithering under the covers and into the bathtubs of unsuspecting townsfolk. Since it went for her mouth, she was able to dig her nails and teeth into it to stop it from warming down her esophagus. It's hard to know how strong these slugs are. It's probably a lot harder to pull them off than it looks. Best not to underestimate them. She runs over to warn her mom and siblings, only to find them choking down alien worms with more coming up the stairs and through the windows. Her only option is to park her off the roof and seal herself inside their truck until the bugs move on, after which she could just hold her hand over her mouth or gag herself somehow in order to call the police and get the car keys. Bill's still wasting precious time in the barn trying to triage the damned. He decides to split up and go lone wolf into the town while Starla, the lady cop, and the mayor stand around watching their friends slowly die. Before he leaves, he hands Starla his Model 1200 pump action shotgun. Handing an untrained lightweight woman a giant shotgun isn't the best idea. He'd have been better off giving it to the lady cop, handing her his pistol while he takes the shotgun, or giving her the Colt Commando with a round in the chamber and the safety off. Why Bill or any of the others didn't pick up the automatic weapons is beyond me. And of course, nobody is paying attention to the bodies that the slugs wormed into after everything they've witnessed. Yes, yeah, Starla, putting your gun down and turning your back on them so you could wet a rag for their foreheads is a totally sane thing to do. How the fuck are you still alive? Everyone that sucked down the spaghetti is now turning into a half-grant parasite-controlled zombie. Apparently, it wasn't as obvious to the lady cop who walked right into a group of them who then took her hostage. Right before she can get her gun out, the kid cop projectile vomits acid bile onto her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starla finally realizes that these aren't her friends anymore, grabs the shoddy and decapitates Wally before he shoots his acid load on her too. I got the balls to Starla doesn't understand that the pump action has to be pumped. She just pulls the trigger, expecting another shell to have magically loaded itself into the chamber. As all dumbasses in movies do, she drops the only effective weapon she has and runs off. Really though, this was Bill's fault. He shouldn't have split up, and if he was, giving her the lighter recoiling, self-loading pistol or AR-15 would have made much more sense. Bill arrives at the Strutmeyer's home and finds the girl in the truck being assaulted by her family. He's the most clueless, naive sack of shit sheriff I've ever seen. How? After everything you've seen, are you still acting like everyone just caught a bad cold and needs to visit urgent care? One of the bug brains shovels him over the head, luckily not hard enough to knock him out. Bill shoots his foot from the hip and narrowly escapes into his cop car with the last Strutmeyer girl. Instead of peeling out of there, he sits in park with zombies trying to break through his windows while he radios his friends. There's no answer, but seconds later, he sees them getting chased up the road. <laughs> 
In my opinion, he shouldn't have driven off from the zombies. He should have baited them back to the shed, grabbed the rifles, and mowed them all down. That or put his front bumper to use. Now they're all gonna start attacking other innocent, unarmed people. Bill radios his dispatch lady, Shelby, and tells her to call the CDC. He doesn't tell her why, what's going on, or that she needs to cover her mouth so the parasites don't kill her. He only asks her if she's seen any slugs. This woefully insufficient warning led to Shelby being caught completely off guard. When Bill radios Shelby again, checking on her CDC call, it's clear that she's one of them now. Bill isn't paying attention to the road and gets blindsided by a bug-driven truck. The mayor and Starla are completely knocked out, but Bill and Kylie manage to flee the scene before getting overwhelmed. Since Kylie had the close encounter with the alien and had formed some sort of connection with it, Bill asks her if she thinks killing Grant, the head bug, will shut all the zombies down too. I don't think she would know, man. Realistically, these things are separate biological entities bootstrapping a fragment of Grant thinks consciousness. Since there's no connection slaving them to Grant, they couldn't be remotely shut down by killing Grant. They might be leaderless and lost, but they wouldn't spontaneously combust or anything. Then again, this is a dumb movie, so probably. Bill's plan is to grab the grenade from the police station and lob it at Grant, if he can find him. It's a very well thought out plan with all contingencies covered. I'm not sure if this is like the invasion of the body snatchers, where you could act like one of them and they wouldn't attack you. I'm inclined to say no, but it's worth a shot. I still think hot wiring a car, going back to the shed to get guns, then driving to the next town over to warn them and recruit some help is a better and safer idea. You'd be leaving Starla and the mayor behind, but you do have every reason to believe that they're already dead. It's too much of a risk to save them. If Bill dies, nobody will be left alive to warn surrounding towns. Kylie should come with him. It's not like she's safer in the tree line with Grant and the slug slithering around. Bill makes it inside undetected and tries the phone. These crafty bugs cut the lines. Back to plan A. He really needs to have his gun drawn, or preferably a large blade to quietly subdue Shelby if she's still in here. Motherfucker. Kylie saving his ass was as unexpected as getting assaulted by a zombie deer. How the hell did it even get inside the police station? Bill, you gotta stop giving guns to people that don't know how to use them. Jesus Christ, how was this guy the town sheriff? Finding Grant shouldn't be too hard. All the zombies are congregating at his original home. They spot Mayor Jack getting dragged off into the feeding pit in Grant's basement. It's too late to save him. He was pretty much fucked after getting knocked out in the car crash. Now he's one of them feeding on rotting corpses, partially digested from acid vomit. I'm all for cannibalism out of necessity, but this is just gratuitous. Bill and Kylie make it to the fence line of Grant's property. Grant's home. He's definitely cultivated mass. Dude makes Jabba the Hutt look fit and kempt. He's not feeding on dog meat anymore. He's absorbing the slug zombies. I'm doubting the grenade's effectiveness on something of that size. The benefit to this monstrosity is that it's too big and slow to move. If you can light the house on fire while simultaneously injuring it with the grenade, that might be enough to kill it. Bill spots Starla walking towards him. She doesn't look infected. Getting her out beforehand without getting bisected by a tendril is going to be tricky. Grant won't outright kill Starla if he's kept her alive this long. If Bill can open up an exit for her to escape through, he could toss the grenade in with a container full of gas. Starla, not knowing Bill and Kylie survived, came up with her own plan. She whispers sweet nothings in his ear in order to get close enough to shank him with the handle of a comb. Yeah, her situation's pretty desperate. <laughs> Should have gone for the brain. Bill and Kylie hear Starla getting tentacle whipped and go in loud. <laughs> Please! They reach the final boss and Bill pulls the pin on the grenade only for it to get whipped out of his hand. Running after a grenade with a four-ish second fuse to re-throw it is a monumentally stupid idea. He picks up the grenade and immediately gets projected through the window. It's a good thing he let go of it and it rolled into the pool. I was expecting him to end up like that guy in Saving Private Ryan trying to put the short fuse sticky nade on the tiger tank. It's safe to say Bill is only alive due to his thick plot armor. Kylie just stands there while all this is going on with a pistol in her hand that she could have emptied into 
Grant's skull, waiting until it's her turn to get bitch slapped across the room. The Grant thing manages to shove one umbilical cord into Bill's chest, pumping him with God knows what. Bill catches the other tentacle and, noticing the leaking propane tank that God himself rolled over to him, hooks it up, pumping propane into Grant's stomachs. By another grace of God, there was a pistol lying right next to Starla, which she uses to open Grant's belly full of gas up, exposing the gas to the sparks which angels themselves were sprinkling onto the meat pit. Shooting out a window or driving the car through the side of the house for Starla to jump through and lighting the house on fire by tossing a Molotov cocktail out the driver window would have been far less risky and you wouldn't have ended up with a $10,000 medical bill for pumping out Grant's bile and sewing your gut shut. Of fucking course, killing Grant somehow severs a physics-defying neural connection between him and his minions, neatly tying up all loose ends. Convenient, but realistically they would have had to mop up the rest with conventional firepower. How could an organism, an entire race survive for billions of years with a central point of failure like that. Oh, Kylie's still alive. And Bill. We know he won't be turning because Grant's dead, and as Kylie somehow knows, you need both tentacles inside you to get all wormy. I'd hang on to that pistol just in case, though. The movie ends with Bill, Starla, and Kylie walking over hundreds of worm-brained corpses to the hospital in the next town 10 miles over, because driving isn't something they thought of. Let's recap the pivotal points where different decisions could have altered who lived and died. It didn't really matter that Grant was the one to poke the slug. Eventually, the slug would have found a target host, who then found a breeder host. Grant just happened to be that guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. Brenda's attack and later combustion was unpreventable. Bill's posse should have been able to mow the Grant thing down in the Strutmeyer's farm right off the bat. This would have, albeit stupidly, ended Brenda thing in the larva slug's lives immediately, saving all the townsfolk in the posse's lives. All said and done, I think we could have beaten the meat monstrosity from Slither. Thanks for watching, and remember, if alien bug-controlled people are invading your town, it's better to shoot first and ask questions later.